series called uh, Fully Loaded. I don't know what's wrong with my iPad. It's playing up today. I might, I might have to buy a new Apple product. <laughs> so much for me saying, who let the lads out? <laughs> who lets you buy your Apple products? Anyway. So we were saying uh, people that love things that are fully loaded. The Swiss love fully loaded pen knives. Asian, African countries love to lo fully load their vehicles. Um, we love to fully load our food, cars, whatever it happens to be. But the Bible tells us that God daily loads us with benefits. We are a blessed people. And sometimes we don't appreciate that. There's an old song that says, count your blessings, and we need to do that. We need to realize that we are loaded with benefits. And so we're each loaded with gifting and ability. We can't all be super poets. We all can't stand at the front and preach. We all can't be missionaries. But we all have abilities and giftings that God has given us so that we can be a, a blessing to people on the earth. And, and so Dr. Lee, when he was here, mentioned this last time. He said, the miracle worker lives in you and I. And so that's why we can be a blessing to those around us. We looked last time, we're loaded with the name of Jesus. We're loaded with the presence of Jesus. We've experienced that today, haven't we, as we've been in worship. We are loaded with faith. God gives us faith even at the very inception of our, to give us the ability to, to receive him. We are loaded with hope. We looked at that last week. We saw last week also that we are loaded with God's love. Look at this great verse. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit uh, who has been given to us. So this is God's love. We looked at this last week. We saw that there were four types of love. There's agape, which is the God type of love. It's unconditional. It's sacrificial. You'll know about that if you're married. Uh, there's filio. There's friendship <laughs> and affection. There's storage, which is family community. There's eros, which is romantic sexual love. And we, we looked very quickly last week how, how God um, had this conversation, how Jesus had this conversation with Peter, how he said, uh, Jesus, or Peter said, I'll follow you everywhere. Jesus said, well, you'll deny me three times. We know the story, hopefully. And so when a little bit later on after the resurrection, Jesus met Peter again, and he said, Peter, do you love me? And he asked him, do you agape me? Do you unconditionally love me? And Peter said, no, I, I fill phileo you, I phileo you. Uh, he asked him the second time, do you agape me? He said, no, I, I phileo, phileo you. The third time Jesus then stepped down to where Peter was and said, well, Peter, do you filio love me? Peter said, I filio love you. Jesus will come to where we are at to bring us to where we need to be. Amazing. That is an, um, one of the most amazing inc incidences in the scriptures. And so we saw that this agape love helps us to love God. And, and so we're great at loving God, aren't we? Because I will... We can't see him. We can feel him, but we can't see him. It's easy to love somebody that you can't see. Helps us to love our neighbor. Sometimes that's not so easy. Helps us to love ourselves. That's not an easy one for, for some of us. Some of are better at that than others. But it also helps us to love our enemies. And we saw last week how Jesus wasn't telling us, he said, love your enemies. He wasn't telling us to filio love them. He was telling us to agape love them because it's with the God kind of love. And so that helps us understand uh, that whole, sometimes we read things in the scriptures if we don't understand the root word, uh, meaning behind the word, it, it can, can confuse us a little. So today we're going to look at a one or two, uh, and uh, we're not going to rush through these, so if we don't get them all done today, we can pick them up again. We are loaded with the message of the gospel. So if you have met Jesus, if you know Jesus, he has loaded you with the message of the gospel. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says this in the message, if you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious gospel message around in unadorned clay pots, uh, the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. Now, some of you are more adorned than others. So the unadorned clay pots things, it's okay, we get it, we get it. Uh, but he said there's, there's treasure, one translation said there's treasure in earthen vessels. So we're just human beings, but within us there's this great treasure of the Holy Spirit 
of the gospel message. The message is for all, but sometimes we relate or connect better with a specific people group. You may think about this. You may have been a Christian for a while, and it may seem that there's a particular type of person. Maybe it's housewives. Maybe it's the people you work with. Maybe if you have a chance to go on missions, it's a particular group of people that you that connect with you and you connect with in sharing the gospel. Does anybody understand what I, what I mean by that? Is there any? I don't want you to shout it out or say who it is, but do you get that? There's, there's. Have you ever analyzed and think, I always seem to be able to talk to that type of person and they just get what I'm saying. But there's a group of people over here when I share the gospel with them, it's just I'm wasting my time. We all have those things and, and we see it in the scriptures. We see some of the apostles were called to go to certain people groups and that's where they had their most success. So don't panic if you're sharing the gospel uh, in certain environments and, and you have a really successful area where you share the gospel and an area over here where you think, I'm just beating my head off a wall here. That's okay because we're all called to reach different groups of people. Some people are good at connecting with everybody, but for most of us, there are people, maybe it's people who do this, they're similar in their work ethic, their mindset, business, maybe business people relate better to business people, I don't know, but watch out for that, because that will give you a confidence as you begin to share the gospel in certain areas with certain people. So this message is for everybody, but sometimes we do relate better from one group of people to another. The Apostle Paul says this, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I see it as the very power of God working for the salvation of everyone who believes it. And so we need to, we need to be confident in the gospel ourselves, don't we? Uh, if we're ashamed of the gospel, if we're thinking, well, it's not working great for me, well, then don't export it. <laughs> Get it working for you first. Uh, Get, prove it to you first. Uh, walk in it first before you start telling other people. And we'll, we'll see that a little bit later on in one of the other things that we're loaded with. But I see it, uh, I see in it God's plan for imparting righteousness to men, a process begun and continued by their faith. So the gospel, we're loaded with the gospel. What is the, go the gospel message? The gospel message is we're forgiven. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are righteous people here today. We cannot be any more righteous according to the scriptures. Theologically, God can't make us any more right. Jesus already died on the cross. He shed his blood. If we put our trust in him, we're actually as righteous as we're ever going to be. We need to tell our bodies. We need to tell our minds. We need to tell our emotions to get in line with what God has already done for us. And so I understand the difference between righteousness and holiness and holy living and all, all the, that. But if we can get a righteousness consciousness, this is not in my notes actually, but this is for somebody. When we're not Christians, we have a sin consciousness. Isn't that right? We're drawn to sin. We keep sinning. And as John Heenan says, well, that's people's job. A sinner's job is to sin. A righteous person, a person who has the gospel, a person who's saved, a righteous person's job is to what? Do righteousness. And so we should no longer have a sin consciousness. It doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean that we don't sin. But we should have a righteousness consciousness. We should have a consciousness that we are in right relationship with the Lord, that we're favored by him, that he daily loads us with benefits, that we're the apple of his eye, that he's looking out to make, to, to bless us, to favor us in every situation. Whereas if we have a sin consciousness, we're always, we're always sort of a, a little bit looking over our shoulders, God going to get us. But if a righteousness consciousness, we're always looking over our shoulder thinking, how's God going to bless us? It's a very different mindset, and I often use this example. Do we have a smiling Jesus or a cross Jesus when we imagine Jesus? Because if we have a righteousness consciousness, we'll have a smiling Jesus. When we close our eyes and think of Jesus, however you see him, however you imagine God to be, he will be smiling over your life with blessing. But if we have a sin consciousness, we'll be thinking, mm, better watch myself around God because he's going to get me. 
So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I see it as the very power of God working for the salvation of everyone who believes it. I see in it God's plan for imparting righteousness to men, a process begun and continued by their faith. The Bible tells us every day that goes by, we should be becoming more like Jesus. So what is the gospel message? It's the good news that counteracts the bad news. We've heard the gospel presented many times, and it's, it actually sounds like bad news itself. Have, have you ever heard a gospel message and think, that's rough? It sounds like bad news, but actually the, mess, the gospel message is the good news that counteracts the bad news. The bad news is we're all sinners. We cannot save ourselves or earn salvation by good works. Some of us were brought up in, in religious traditions that taught us that the way to heaven was having the balance tipping one way or the other. Should have brought a balance, shouldn't it? So here's all our bad stuff over here, all the bad stuff that I do. That If you want to list, ask Mary. Um, <laughs> all the bad stuff over here, but if I have enough good stuff over here to tip the balance, then hopefully I'll get in. There's not a lot of assurance in that, is there? You maybe were brought up in a religious system that there was no assurance because you're never sure, does this lie over here weigh more than this good act over here? Because we don't know the weight of those things. You don't. So actually, I used a bad word over here. It weighs two kilos, but I actually helped a poor person over here. It only weighs 1.9 kilos. Ah, damn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> but do you get the point? Many of us were brought up in that system, so therefore we have this dilemma. We're over here and think, ah, I don't know where to get over here and do all the good, do a few good things. And then we're busy, and because we've got this sin consciousness, we're drawn back over here. And we look at the mountain. So here we are. In the, we look at this mountain of bad, negative stuff, and we think, what's the point? I might as well just in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's get blocked. And that's how many people think. Many Christians think like that because they haven't dealt with the sin consciousness issue and, and received a righteousness consciousness. You know, if there's one thing you could be ask the prayer team to pray for you today is ask God to reveal to you and release to you a righteousness consciousness. It will change your life. It, you will feel three stone lighter. Forget about Slim and World. Well, don't forget about Slim and World. That's good. You will feel three stone lighter if you get a righteousness consciousness. So the bad news is we're all sinners. We can't save ourselves or earn salvation by good works. The Bible tells us everyone has sinned, fallen short, or is not worthy of God's glorious standard, presence, or glory. So we can't reach the mark. Part of the, the meaning of the word sin is, is not, it's an archery word. The word sin is an archery word. It's about hitting the bullseye. Some people are better at archery than others. But it's not hitting the bullseye. So you fall short at all. That's where the word sin comes. To fall short, to not hit the bullseye. That's where the word sin comes from. So everyone has sinned. Everyone has fallen short. Is not worthy of God's glorious standard, presence, or glory. So the bad news is we're all sinners. And therefore, we need a savior. Now, here's a problem in the world we live in today. We don't believe or we're not taught that there's a God. We're not taught that there's a creator, so therefore we're not created beings. We're not taught sin. Is there no such a thing as sin? It's a lifestyle option or a lifestyle choice. So how, So there's a world of people out there in a dilemma because they don't understand any of this stuff. Who does understand it? Put your hand up if you're a gospel fully loaded with the gospel. We understand it, don't we? We should understand it, but now we've been sitting in church, many of us, long enough. And so the bad news is we're all sinners, therefore we need a Savior. But actually, there's good news that comes out of that. Here it is in the nutshell, Paul says. Just as one person did it wrong, speaking of Adam, 
and got us in all this trouble with sin and death. Another person did it right, Jesus, and got us out of it. But more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. I love the way that's put in that translation. Uh, he just didn't get us out of trouble. He got us into life. Because sometimes when you get someone out of trouble, you leave them in a vacuum. Remember Jesus told the story, well, don't, don't cast the, the devils out of the person unless you're going to quit sweep the, the, the floor and get the Holy Spirit in there because things will be worse. And so you can get somebody out of trouble, but you need to replace that trouble with something else. You need to get the person out of sin, but you need to replace it with something else. What, what's that righteousness? So he just didn't get us out of, more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. One man said yes to God and put many people in the right or made them righteous. That's great news today. If we know Jesus, if we have repented, if we have given our lives to him, we are as righteous as we're ever going to be. We just need to learn how to walk that out. We just need to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit and deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, walk with him the more we walk with him, the more we're going to get into this life that Jesus has got us into. Now, because of that, we're loaded. We'll just we'll do this one more and then we'll leave it here today. Because of the gospel message that we're loaded with, we're also loaded with ministry. Because this is not just for us. Wouldn't it be really selfish if we were to say, happy days. I'm no longer, this sin that was over here has been dealt with. I now am the righteousness of God. All these people over here are going to hell because they haven't dealt with it. Well, that's their problem. Just as Lindsay said, well, if you're not going, and she's only going on the Friday night, it's your problem, whatever happened. What a terrible attitude. <laughs> but that's the way we are as Christians sometimes. I'm saved. My wife or husband's saved. My family's saved. It's everybody else's problem. Deal with it. Now, most of us don't say that. Isn't that right? But actually, most of our lifestyle says that because we never tell anybody about Jesus. Or if we do, it's maybe more limited than it should be. It's not heavy, but just is, is that right or is it not? Do we always take every opportunity? My mother is a great one at taking opportunity. Uh, I never seen anybody can weave the gospel into, she could take any conversation and bring it around to ask the person, are they a Christian? Do they know Jesus? Are they saved? Uh, I think, how does she do that? She must have a twisted mind. Uh, but, but we need to learn to do that. You know, somebody was telling me uh, the other day, oh, sorry, I was late to do some work at your business, but a friend of mine, 44, uh, was killed suddenly. He's building a new house with his family, his wife and family, planning for the rest of his days, 44 years old. And he said, just come from the funeral. Uh, and so I, I simply said to the guy, it just shows you, you need to be ready, don't you? And so I didn't get into a whole big conversation, probably not the time when he's just come from burying his best friend, but I'd be talking to him over the next week or two because that's a, com a, a conversation that can be opened up. And so we are loaded with ministry. All of us, not just the people on the platform, not just the people that write poetry, not just the people who lead worship, we're all loaded with ministry. This treasure is within us. Look what it says. All of this is a gift from our Creator, our Creator God, who has pursued us and brought us into a restored and healthy relationship with Him through Christ. Isn't that good news? He's brought us into a restored and healthy relationship with God through Christ. And he has given us the same mission as he gave Jesus. Now, thankfully, we don't have to die on the cross. Thankfully, he has done that part. But he's given us the same mission, the ministry of reconciliation to bring others back to him. So you ask people, what's God's, people always say, well, what's God's will for my life? You ask people, what's your gifting? Well, I don't know what my gifting is. I don't know what my calling is. Every one of us, here's a good start. If you don't know what your gifting is, if you don't know what your calling is, if you don't know what your ministry is, you have the ministry of reconciliation. Every one of us who know the Lord today have the ministry of reconciliation. So you know when you're filling those forms and they ask you what you are, doctor, minister, pilot, ordinary person, MBE, uh, 
I'm going to Buckingham Palace this week, just in case nobody had heard anyway. <laughs> you could put Minister of Reconciliation. You know, I hate that where it says Minister of Religion. I'm not a Minister of Religion. Religion is death. Religion is death. If it said Minister of Life, I, I wouldn't mind ticking that box, so I don't put anything. I just put me, Mister. Uh, and so, but we have the Ministry of Reconciliation. Isn't that an amazing thing to bring others back to God? Look what it goes on to say in this scripture. It is, the, it is central to the good news or the good news of the gospel message that God was in Jesus making things right between himself and the world. This means he does not hold their sins against them. That's good news, isn't it? When you're talking to your friend, because most people, when push comes to shove, know they're sinners. They've maybe been taught there's no such a thing as sin. They've maybe been taught there's no God. The Bible actually says the laws of God are written in the, the, on man's heart. People know right from wrong. People have a conscience. God has created us in his image, the Bible says. People know right from wrong. People know. Here's how they know, because if you did it to them, you would know all about it. Isn't that a good point? So if people tell you uh, there's no sin, you go and put your hand in their pocket. Those jeans are too tight. But if there was 20 pound in there, <laughs> Emma's are even tighter and she's bursting out of hers. Uh, so if people say, there's no such a thing as sin, go and put your hand in their pocket and steal their wallet. Take their wallet. So what do you think they're doing? Well, sure, there's no sin. I'm going to take this. You'll see whether they believe in sin or not. Be a good illustration, wouldn't it? <laughs> Maybe not. He charges us to proclaim the message that heals and restores our broken relationships with God and with each other. Isn't that amazing? That is good news to someone who's weighed down with sin, who's weighed down with the weight of the world, who knows there's this gap, who knows the sin pile is bigger than the righteousness pile, who doesn't know what the answer is. It's good to know that Jesus paid the price, that he's no longer holding their sins against them. They just need to come and connect with him. They need to come and repent. They need to give their lives to him and step into this righteousness, step into this blessing that he has for each one of them. Isn't that amazing? We have this gospel message. We're loaded with this gospel message, but we're not just loaded with it for ourselves. We're loaded with it so we can be ministers of reconciliation. Each one of us, as we get up in the morning, are going out as ministers. One translation says we're ambassadors. We're going, an ambassador is someone from another place who represents that kingdom somewhere else. You see, this world is not our home. If you left country and western song coming on, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. And that's right. <laughs> I know I'm not going to sing it, honestly. I feel the urge, but I'm not. <laughs> you wouldn't want to hear my singing. And, and so we're, we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven, aren't we? We're citizens of the kingdom of, of God. So we are ambassadors here on earth. We are those ministers of reconciliation there to tell people there's good news. The good news is God has already forgiven you, but you do have to, uh, sometimes you ever get those messages that are put through your ladder box, say there's a parcel for you at the, the post office. It could have something really good in it, but if you don't go and pick it up, you're never going to benefit from it. Isn't that right? Don't answer the ones that come in email to say there's a million pound for you if you click, click this link. Don't answer those ones. But if, if there's a, a thing from Royal Mail through your letterbox to say there's a parcel for you at the post office, please come and pick it up. That's good news if you're expecting something. If it's a surprise, it's even better. For some people, that's a surprise. That's the good news they need to hear. They just need to come to the post office. They just need to come to the foot of the cross. They just need to come to Jesus because there's a parcel for them. It's called forgiveness. It's called righteousness in the place of sin. And we are the ministers that God has called because he's given us that gospel message to tell people that they are in a place now 
that where God heals and restores our broken relationships with God and with each other. What a message. Will the team come? We're going to worship together. Maybe today you don't know Jesus. Maybe today you've never responded. You never went to the post office and picked up that gift. Speak to the prayer team today. This may be the day that you need to give your life to Jesus. This may be the day that you realize, hold on, I've been trying to work all these good works over here against, or all these bad works over here against these good things, and it's definitely not working. Today's the day to receive forgiveness and find Jesus. Amen.